friends, welcome back. So today we are gonna be making a velvet capelet. And this inspiration really came to me because a lot of brands that I love and I follow have their own version of a velvet capelet. And it's very much inspired by like a Victorian era uh, outerwear. And I just love them so much. And I would love to be able to make one my own rather than just buying one. I mean, I still plan on buying at least one of the designs that I've seen online. But I wanted something a little bit more simple and that incorporated both black and white. And so when I was making my last project, the five petal baby Demogorgon bag, uh, which was posted last week, I was able to find velvet fabric at my local store, which is rarely happens. Every time I've gone in, they haven't had any woven velvet. They've had plenty of like knit velvet that's stretchy, but as I've mentioned in videos before, I tend to prefer to work with woven fabrics over knit fabrics. I just like the structure that they provide. And so the idea for today is to create a capelet, which I have drawn up a tiny little design here where it has a black and white border trim with some floral on it and some matching embroidery on a little Peter Pan collar. And it's gonna have some thickness to it because I'm adding a layer of insulation so that it's actually functional and we can wear it during the winter time, which I think is super important when making your own clothes is making sure that it's wearable and usable for the design that you're making it. And so today we're gonna start by cutting out the fabric and maybe starting to assemble. I am using a pattern for this project, but it is a modified pattern. I made a mock-up already using scrap fabric and then made adjustments based off that. So it should work out well and hopefully it'll turn out exactly how I'm hoping. But if not, I'm at the minimum hoping that it comes out functional so that way I can wear it when I have some of my black clothing because currently my only winter outerwear is a beautiful green coat that I got off Etsy and I love it so much. But Green and black sometimes clashes if I'm wearing, you know, like a very tonal outfit, you know, like black and white, and then you add like a warm green on top. It's just not what I'm hoping for. And I think this capelet will turn out to be just a little bit more dressy as well. So that's the plan for today. Let's go ahead and jump in and see what we can get done. Okay, so I am at my little handy dandy sewing table, AKA my dining room table, because I don't have a dedicated room for sewing. And so I get to inhabit our space all the time and be a goblin and make a mess. It is a running joke around here and I absolutely love it. And here he is, the star of the show. Might as well call this Pip's channel. Okay, so I have my initial fabric, which is this black velvet that I was talking about just a couple minutes ago. And then I have a black sateen lining for the inside of the jacket, or at least the collar. And then for the inside of the jacket, I have a white to be kind of contrasting. And I think it'll look quite nice. And I plan on using extra uh, of the white for a ribbon for the closure. So I'll just make a tie and then I can do a ribbon once I have it sewn onto the capelet. And then this crinkly fabric, I don't know if you guys can hear it, is essentially like an insulation. They use it for a lot of the times it's used for like oven mitts or stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to attempt to use it for the inside of the cape to give it one, some structure, and two, just to make it actually warm. And Mr. P is currently also really loving the <laughs> insulating fabric. One second. So I have all of the fabric laid out in front of me and I'm sorry if there's a weird noise in the background. We're doing laundry and I don't have a microphone so I just use my camera. So it always ends up either sounding very edited and AI after the fact once I do noise reduction 
or you guys can hear some of the stuff in the background. So apologies in advance for that. But for the trim, I have this lace right here, which I really, honestly, this is what dictated the entirety of the design was this beautiful lace. It's just so cute and classic, but whimsical at the same time. Like it has a girly flair to it that I just love that will make it a little less, I don't know, stuffy. I had a couple trims picked out that were absolutely beautiful, but were just a little too structured for the look I was going for. And then I saw this at the very last moment. I was getting very discouraged looking at the options. And once I saw this, I knew exactly what direction I wanted to go in. And so I have this trim here. And I also purchased just a little bit to maybe go around the collar. And it's this kind of ribbon black velvet. And then I purchased some sateen or satin embroidery floss. And this will be my first time using satin embroidery floss. I don't know if it's gonna be much different. I know that I, I have heard horror stories about like metallic embroidery floss, uh, but nothing specific about the satin. So I'm hoping that it'll turn out just fine. And the reason I chose the satin is I was hoping it would shine out and stand out against the texture of the velvet. And of course, I got some matching thread so that you can't see anything. And I already have white thread, so I don't have to worry about the underside. Anytime I do um, like stitch work that has one color on top, one color on bottom, I always match that with my bobbin and my upper thread. So if I'm stitching with the velvet side up and this sateen on bottom, my bobbin will have white thread and my top will have black thread and that way it essentially becomes invisible if your tension is right. But now that we have all of our fabric ready and in front of us, let's go ahead and grab our pattern and get started on the cutting process. So I will be using the Simplicity S9008 pattern for the capelet. And it's essentially, I think, the C and D uh, view. However, I have turned the back piece, which is in this pattern is technically three, like one, two, three pieces. I turned the back piece into just one piece that I'll cut on the fold so that I have just two shoulder seams rather than having shoulder seams and two seams down the back. And if you do this by the pattern, it will give you this nice like gathered section that you can do like uh, almost like a corset detail in the back, but I didn't want that. I wanted it to be kind of just clean and a nice little um, capelet. And I also added about an inch on the bottom of the pattern just to give me a little bit of extra length to account for that thickness that I'm adding in with the insulating layer and also just to like elongate it a little bit. When I did the mock-up, it was just a bit too short knowing I would need to hem it. So I will need to cut out two of the front pieces and one of the back on a fold. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then we will think about assembly. I have cut out the capelet pieces and one thing I always like to do is a little try on after cutting out each of the pieces just simply by pinning them together if I can. So this is just the cut out pieces and I have tacked them with pins. 
But I think you can get the idea of what I'm going for here. I think the length is going to be just right because once you hem it, you're going to also have this trim on the bottom, which is going to add some length to it. And then, of course, you're going to have a little collar up here and some seam allowance taken in from the sides. And then you're going to have some thickness added to it from the like insulating layer and then of course the lining. So I think it's going to turn out quite cute. Let's go ahead and cut out the pieces for the insulating layer and the lining layer and start to sew the insulating layer to the velvet. We're gonna do that as like a interface or almost like interfacing, like inner lining uh, so that it's gonna be treated as one fabric. And then we'll do the lining, sandwich it, leave the top and just a little bit of this part open. So that way we can add that ribbon and the collar in later. And then we'll turn it inside out and work on the collar. And the collar is going to be uh, using what's left of the velvet fabric and trying to draw it on and shape on the back of this or on the front. I know drawing on velvet is really tough, but I do have a white pen, heat erasable pen, um, but we'll see. I'm, I, I might have to look up how to do that. I think most of the time they use like the wash away uh, stabilizer, but I've tried to use that before for a project and it absolutely ruined it. It did not work well. So I don't, I think it must've been a user error on my part, but I will have to come up with a good way to do the collar. I think probably just having it generally sketched out on the back, keeping my placement and trying to maybe freehand it. I don't know. Um, we'll see. But as you can see here, another apologies is that I am filming in front of a window, so the lighting is going to change as we go. On to step two. Okay, so I have uh, essentially cut out the lining for the main part of the cape. The collar is gonna have a black sateen lining since it's gonna be kind of like showing like if it lifts up a little. And so now I'm gonna cut out the same pattern pieces but on my insulating fabric for the main part of the cape. If my menace of a cat, Mr. P, will let me. He really likes it and I guess it makes sense. It's gonna trap heat and be nice and warm. Uh, so let's see if we can struggle to get this cut out. All of my pieces are cut out. And so right now I just have the velvet and the essentially insulating layer pinned together and so unlike the petals which i did in my last video and i made them just in one full pocket i'm going to be treating this as one fabric piece so i'm going to go in and make a very close edge stitch uh, along the line just to kind of tack these together and it's going to be within the seam allowance so that way it doesn't show in the end product and once the velvet and the insulating layer are essentially tacked together, then I will take my lining piece, which I have cut out here, and make that packet, kind of like I did in the last video, where you have it kind of attached and then you turn it all inside out. So this 
stitch, I'm gonna go around all of the edges, but the next one, I'm just gonna leave the neck opening open so I can still open it up. And once I do the lining, I'm probably going to zigzag stitch the edge so that way the lining doesn't fray and the velvet doesn't fray. I would use my serger, but that still hasn't been fixed because I am really lazy and forget to drop it off at a sewing machine repair place. So that's on my to-do list in the next couple of weeks is to drop it off and hope that they can help me figure out what's wrong and maybe teach me how to use it a bit better as well. So let's go ahead and get sewing. I have finished doing the inner lining and now I have all of the pieces lined up together with the shoulder seams. And the next step really is just sewing these front and back pieces together. And once the front and back are together, then I can work on doing the exact same thing for the lining and then attaching the lining to the outside layer and flipping it inside out. And then we can start working on the collar. I don't think I'll get to the collar tonight. I might be able to get to measuring it out and figuring out the pattern for it based on the neck hole size and maybe even starting on getting the embroidery designed out and maybe doing that on the couch while watching some TV. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the progress that I made today and only the few hours I've been working on it. I know capes are a beginner friendly uh, project, which usually means they're relatively quick and easy, but I had never made a cape before or a capelet, so I am always kind of interested to see how, uh, you know, quick or slow a project will go. So I'm going to start sewing this and then I will meet you back here when it's time to assemble the outside with the lining. We're back for another day of sewing. Honestly, I'm not doing a lot today. I just wanted to check in and talk about what I'm going to be doing over the next day or so. So that way you guys can see the different pieces I'm putting together. But I did finish sewing the outside of the cape with the lining. So this process was actually quite tedious and difficult. The sap lining wanted to slip around. I have worked with slippery fabric before. I made a dress out of chiffon, uh, which was a pain, but I really didn't think that I needed any extra tools to do this. Uh, however, after doing the lining, I decided to wait a few days before continuing on this project and sewing the lace trim on since I didn't want to have the exact same issue uh, as I did before. So I ordered a walking foot for my sewing machine, which I've seen people use before for projects with thick fabric and slippery fabric, and it works quite well. But luckily the um, sewing company said that it worked. So I went ahead and ordered that. So I'm going to use the walking foot to attach the edge trim and also work on drafting a Peter Pan collar. So that's gonna be kind of the next few steps is trying to make a collar and make sure that these uh, lace is attached to the bottom and looks nice and doesn't look all sorts of messed up, kind of like the lining is, but guest star and appearance. He just wants to hang out all day. He loves you guys too, I can tell. Okay, so I found a, I found a video tutorial on how to draft a Peter Pan collar using your current pattern. And so I made the first little prototype and now I'm gonna try and trace this and add some seam allowance and maybe some extra allowance on the inside of the neck uh, part of the pattern. So that way I can have a little bit more room for attaching the two. Uh, but really it would just be adding extra seam allowance on the inside rather than the edges um, since the seam allowance on the edge is just going to be for the top and the lower part. And within that tutorial, it also showed me how to make an under collar, which I might try to do as well, or I might just do both. And especially since this is a satiny black and a velvet, so it's not going to show that much. 
Uh, so we'll see what, what I end up choosing to do. But now that I have this, I'm gonna make that final collar piece and probably use some scrap fabric to test it and see if that comes out and it fits the whole opening on the actual capelet before cutting into my velvet fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on that. And if it all works out, I will trace my pattern onto my velvet fabric and think about trying to embroider it. And if the embroidery doesn't work, then I'll just move on to uh, attaching the collar to the capelet and doing the finishing touches. I just wanted to jump on and give you guys a little update. Good morning, we're back another day. So a couple days ago, I started working on the collar and I had waited to get my new presser foot in and it did really help. But I will say using both velvet and like the lining shiny fabric is very difficult. Uh, and even with a, a super simple project like this, I think that it ended up being a bit more complicated than I thought it was going to be so it's not as polished as I would like it to look but it's still very wearable it's one of those things that I think people are going to say oh is that homemade versus oh my god did you make that you know but honestly that's kind of fine in the learning process when you use new fabric or new techniques um, you're not gonna just like hit the ground running unless you do a bunch of research and I didn't Honestly, I didn't think it was going to be too much more challenging than using like chiffon. And I did make this little chiffon dress last year. Uh, and it was a slippery, complicated fabric, but overall it wasn't that bad. But it's still turning out very cute. And again, very wearable. So I have attached the collar and I have hand stitched the top edge of the lining in place. So now I'm moving on to adding the lace trim. And I am super thankful that I have my walking foot for this part, I think it will be helpful. And so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the lace to the right size of the like bottom of the capelet. And then I'm going to fold in the edges of the lace and just run a stitch um, at the top and at the bottom just to keep it in place. So that way that raw edge that you cut the lace on isn't showing. I might run a whole stitch from top to bottom just so that it encapsulates that entire raw edge. And so that'll be done before I attach the lace. But once I've attached the lace, the capelet should be finished and ready to wear, which is really exciting. And like I said, it's not very cold here, so it should be the perfect thing for a night out. You can kind of see a sneak peek back here. Um, but I did attach the makeshift ribbon, which is just two ties. And I just did it from the same lining fabric and it turned out quite well. Um, it doesn't have a lot of structure, so the bows aren't beautiful. But if I wanted to change that, I could have done like actual ribbon or something different. Either way, the next step is to attach the lace trim, and then we will be ready for the reveal.
Okay, so some final thoughts on this project. One, Velvet is as notorious as it has been made out to be. Uh, especially when you pair that with like a silky satin lining. Talked about it a little bit before, but that definitely made this project a bit more challenging. Along with just the general thickness of the fabric because I added that insulating layer, which I still really like that I did that. It gave the velvet some like thickness, some heft, which makes it feel very luxurious. It does have a little bit of a crinkle when you move it, but otherwise it's very wearable. It was just difficult fabric to work with. I do see the hype for the walker foot. Uh, that is a lifesaver for thick fabrics or slippery fabrics. It definitely helped on the back end of the project and I wish I had it at the beginning. You live and you learn. So as like an advanced beginner sewist uh, and kind of like vlogging my sewing progression, you never really get things right on the first try. Overall though, it's functional, it's going to keep me warm, it is cute. It's something in my wardrobe that I just didn't have before and so now I have that and that makes it easier for me to style things like my black and white clothing and it gives me an option for a less cumbersome like coat uh, during the winter or springtime. Uh, the pattern was fine. The drafting of the collar was kind of challenging uh, but I haven't done a lot of like self-drafting outside of using like the draping method, which has worked historically very well for me. And this time I decided to like follow a tutorial on how to draft a collar. And I did it by the book. I have all of the right tools and I think it just was error, like sewing error on my part. The embroidery, I decided to completely ditch the uh, satin embroidery floss because it is also notoriously difficult to work with. I thought that it might only apply to the metallic, but honestly, I found that it just knotted up more and it was harder to make it look smooth because it, as it got turned and twisted it changed the reflective property of the actual floss which makes sense so with something like this that already is using delicate soft fabric and was kind of a challenge in and of itself for me i decided that i would just use regular embroidery floss and keep the design simple which is how i came up with the daisies trying to match the trim detailing uh, the shape of the, the flowers on the trim, but making them a big kind of statement piece. But of course, nothing is perfect. Sometimes you have projects that just do not go the way that you hoped they would, but it was definitely a learning experience and I know the things that I need to like work on for next time I use these fabrics and or uh, like design that ha doesn't have a, a collar. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna put this in as a finished project Regardless of how I think it turned out, I hope that you guys enjoy watching me, but we will get back to another project next week. And I think this one is gonna be more funny and lighthearted than some of my other ones. So I hope you guys still enjoy it. But thank you guys so much for subscribing to my channel. Honestly, it has grown a lot in the last week and it's been a bit overwhelming, but I'm very happy that everyone is liking my sewing content and decorating and creating just the stuff that I enjoy doing. So it's nice to find other people that also enjoy those kind of things. And I hope to continue doing it as a hobby and show you guys kind of what I create this year. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week.